Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for this is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Listen, I do not own the rights to this music. This is William Augusto. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Soaking in his presence. God is doing a new thing in the midst of every marriage that is on this broadcast, every marriage that will come to this replay. I am here to let you know, behold, he is doing a new thing, a new thing in your marriage. Your marriage is being restored for your faithfulness, for your willingness, for your obedience to get up and pray without ceasing, to cover you, your husband, your wife, and your household, your children, and your children's children will be changed because of your faithfulness and your willingness to pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Listen, I am Prophetess Tabitha Pittman. This evening, this, this midnight prayer, we are embarking on God's new thing for marriage. God's new thing for the marriages in our family. Listen, God will save every marriage in your family because you got up and prayed. You prayed without ceasing. You did not let anything or anyone stop you or hinder you from I'm going forward in midnight prayer. We pray on the second watch because the devil has no problem with his, his uh, minions and his peons and his punks getting up and praying against you. And so we fight fire with fire. We call down the fire of God to war on behalf of our marriages tonight. Hallelujah. And so, Lord, we thank you. We thank you for midnight prayers. We thank you for the third watch prayers that change things. We thank you for maturing us to a level to pray without ceasing. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Listen, tonight we're going to talk about it. We're going to pray about it. And we're going to release what God has from the heavenly council. And we're going to receive his final judgment on our marriages. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. It's his final, his final judgment. When God says now, no man can say no. It's so a Lord, we thank you. We thank you for the courts of heaven rendering a judgment. Hallelujah. On behalf of our marriage in Jesus name. But we thank you, Lord. We don't take it lightly. We thank you, Lord, that you've given the orders, marching orders, if you will, that we will pray without ceasing. We're praying, we're covering marriages, we're covering our children tonight. We're covering our, listen, our grandchildren tonight. We're covering the family in ways that no other people have maybe even thought to cover them. Because listen, we're coming into agreement with what God said do. We're coming into agreement with what he said do. And it's important. What is God rendering the counsel for your marriage? Not what, what your sisters, your aunties, cousins, or anyone else thinks. We're asking the Lord to give us his judgment, to give us his counsel on behalf of marriages. And so I'm telling you, we're going to bombard heaven tonight. We're going to bombard heaven tonight because God has something special just for you. Listen, if you know someone who is going through marriage struggles, tribulations, trials, if you know someone who you believe they don't have an outlet or, or someone to confide in, you know someone who just needs to pray. Listen, if they're married, and if you've been married for longer than two weeks, you begin to cut some teeth, you begin to see some disagreement, you begin to see how the devil likes to sow uh, coils and cords of discord within your marriage. I came here to encourage you tonight that a threefold cord is not easily broken in the name of Jesus. When you've got you, your spouse, and Jesus, that's the threefold cord that we need to represent our household, to represent our family, to represent our, listen, our immediate and extended family. 
And so God is saying, listen, get in covenant with me. Bring me inside the marriage. Let me be the glue that keeps you together. And when you put God first inside your marriage, you don't call everybody else before you go to him. Go to Jesus first. Go to Jesus first and then come back. Come back and sit and wait. Wait to see what he has to say because he has a conversation. Listen, prayer is a dialogue. The word die in dialogue means two. That means that I am saying something to him and I'm waiting for him to say something to me. I'm waiting for him to say something to me regarding my children, regarding my husband, regarding my family, regarding the situation, regarding my feelings, regarding our finances, regarding our agreements or disagreements. God, I want to hear your voice. I don't want to talk about you like you're not in the room. God, I want you right here in the midst of this marriage. God, if that means that I got to open the front door and tell the devil to get the hell out and go back to the pit of hell from whence he came, that's what I'm going to do, Lord. Lord, if that's your instruction for us on this midnight prayer, Lord, we're going to be faithful. Lord, we're going to be obedient to do exactly what you command us to do. We want your commandments on our marriage tonight. We want your commandments on our marriage. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, Lord, we thank you. Thank you, Lord. Listen, God is doing a new thing. I want you to prepare your hearts, prepare your minds for a miracle. For a miracle in your marriage. My marriage, somebody say this out loud. My marriage is a miracle. My marriage is powerful. My marriage is wonderful. My marriage is restored because of the blood of Jesus Christ. Listen, God can restore things. God can restore things like never before when you're faithful, when you're faithful to do what he told you to do when you're faithful to cry out, when you're faithful to pray without ceasing, because that's what he needs from us. He needs us to pray. He needs us to pray for our children's marriage. Some of us have children who are embarking on that age. Some of us have children who are fresh babies. Listen, pray for their marriage. Your prayers will not expire. God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. And so he will honor your prayers. The fervent prayer of a righteous man or woman availeth much. They won't expire. Some of us are living on the prayers of our parents and grandparents. And I want you to know that prayer will affect the marriages in your family for generations to come. For generations to come. How many of you want to leave a legacy of prayer in Jesus' name? Leave a legacy of prayer for your family. Leave a legacy of marriage for your family in the name of Jesus. We want to teach our sons and daughters how to war on their knees and not run away on their feet. I know that's the testimony of more than just me. Let's be that generation. Let's be the generation. Listen, we can pray just like our grandmothers prayed. Somebody with mama prayed, things turned around. I have a praying mother. I have a praying grandmother on both sides of my family. One of my grandmothers is going on to glory. But she taught us how to pray. She taught us how to get results by going into that closet. Listen, your closet is within you. Wherever you go, you can make it a closet because the Holy Spirit lives in you. And so I don't mean I don't know if that means that you got to take five minutes and go sit in your car. 
but pray for your marriage. Pray for your children. Pray for your husband. Pray for your wife. Take time out and just pray. Just pray. Lord, I don't have the answers, but I give it to you. I give it to you tonight. I give everything to you. I give the finances to you. I give the children to you. I give the discord to you. I give the discontentment to you. I'm not meant to be a burial ground, Jesus. And so I don't want to hold this weight, Lord. I don't want to do it in my own strength because I know that that's a sin. You said, take my yoke upon you. You want us to take your yoke, Jesus. Because when I get in the yoke with you, your burden is easy and your yoke, your, your yoke is easy. And your burden is light. So Lord, I'm giving it all to you. I'm, listen, I'm getting in here as a babe because you're, you are the prophet. You are the apostle. You are the great intercessor. And so when I get in the yoke with you, Lord, you're more mature than me. You know the future. You know things outside of my finite mind. And so I'm going to get in the yoke with you tonight, Lord. I'm going to get in the yoke with you tonight. I want your heavenly counsel on marriage. On marriage. And so we don't take it lightly, Lord. We just don't because we've learned better by now. We've learned better by now. Hallelujah. So we're not going to do this lightly. Listen, I thank each and every one of you for being here, faithfully being here. Pastor Smith, love you so much. Young Leonice, Mama Denise, uh, woman of God, Ashley, my Aunt Ella, Mother Kathy, so many others who are coming or have come, who will come. Listen, wherever you're watching from, this is just for you. It's just for you. God is doing something for your faithfulness and for your obedience to continue on in fasting and in prayer for your marriage. And for those of you who will get married or who desire marriage, I want you to know that the devil hates marriage. And so there's going to be a fight. But God has fully equipped us. He's fully equipped us with every weapon that we need in the arsenal, baby, to give the devil another black eye because he's already a defeated foe and he knows it. Now, if you just walk in your kingdom identity tonight and for the rest of your life, being the woman or man of God that Christ called you to be, not wife, not sister, not auntie, not pastor, not prophet. Who does God call you to be? God calls me a prophetic warrior. God calls me a record breaker. God calls me a trailblazer. God calls me a pioneer. That's outside of being a wife. That's outside of being a mom, a sister, or any of those other titles. And so when I walk in my kingdom identity, I'm not filled with shame, guilt, fear, because I'm being in everything that he called me to be. And I'm showing up spiritually healthy, overcoming wisdom. I'm overcoming with wisdom. And I'm united with his purpose. That's what it means to show up. We're being spiritually healthy when we show up in prayer. We're showing up with healthy, wealthy, and wise in the word of God. Listen, turn with me, if you will, in your Bibles. Hallelujah. To Isaiah chapter 40. Isaiah 40. Verse 31, if someone could put that in the chat for me, I greatly appreciate it. Hashtag marriage restoration. Hashtag marriage restoration. Hashtag no divorce zone. No divorce zone. This is a no divorce zone. I declare your marriage as a no divorce zone. No divorce on my watch. No divorce. Listen. We're not in the business of making anybody stay. 
but we are in the business of let God's will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Lord, what have your scrolls written about me and mine? I want to be a fulfillment of everything that the heavenly decrees have said about me in 2023 and all the more in 2024. I want to be what God says I am, what God says my marriage is, because I know that more than just me and him are riding on this marriage. That's just the fact, y'all. Isaiah chapter 40, verses 30 and 31. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We're going to cover our children. We're going to cover our family. We're going to cover the, the, the generations that are looking to us as the pillars of the community. Hallelujah. Verse 30 says, even the youth shall faint and be weary and the young men shall utterly fall. But those who wait on the Lord, hallelujah, whoo, shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint glory to god listen god gave a very specific commandment here very specific because we as the lord's people and he was referring to jacob and all of god's people here he's saying listen we won't be forgotten we won't be forgotten even when we're discouraged and afraid because listen sometimes the concept of god in our little minds is too small God can handle your marriage and God can handle your children. He can handle your marriage. He can handle your children. Listen, God can handle your spouse. God can handle your house. He can handle your finances. He can handle you and everything, every matter that concerns you in the name of Jesus. So listen, we don't have to look at our insufficiency. When he is Jehovah Jireh, he is the great provider. He is all sufficient. Hallelujah. So listen, <laughs> I love this. The word renew actually means to exchange. Listen, when we look at that, renew actually means to exchange. Those who wait or depend on the Lord will exchange their weakness for God's strength. What do you need to exchange? Is it a mindset that you need to exchange? What do you need to exchange? Do, do you need to exchange your, your, your tiredness, your weariness in the marriage? In your parenting, what do you need to exchange tonight? What is it that you need to trade with God? God is here to do business with us tonight. He wants to do business. Soaring, he wants to give us with wings as eagles. Rather, the sought after prize of walking is presented as the mainstay of Christian experience. Listen, you, we walk with Christ. We walk by faith, not by sight. And so even as we begin this journey tonight, we're going to cover everything in the nest of your home, in the nest of your marriage. So listen, I'm just going to pray. I'm going to free flow before we do the command your scriptures, command your marriage with the the uh, scripture affirmations and declarations, we're just going to flow. Let's just flow. Let's just cover it. Listen, we, we've had so many issues. I've had so many people saying, Tabitha, the devil is coming at me left, right, and center. Baby, they don't come after an empty vault. What's in you is powerful. 
You're anointed to do marriage. You're anointed to do business with Christ Jesus. Yes, you got a target on your back, but you are a winner. You are a victor. You are more than a conqueror. So Heavenly Father, we thank you in advance. We thank you for blessing us. We thank you for strengthening us. We thank you for guiding us, Father. We thank you for even energizing us. We thank you for a moment, hallelujah, that is above, Father, everything else that will happen in this day. We thank you, Lord, that every enemy has been rendered powerless. We shut the mouth of the lion right now in the name of Jesus, Father. No weapon formed against the Smith household. No weapon formed against the Steiger household. No weapon formed against the Cheeks household, the Pittman household, the Gaines household. No weapon formed against the McGarry Richardson household. No weapon formed against the Campbell household. No weapon formed against the Edwards household. No weapon formed in the name of Jesus shall prosper. And every tongue that rises up against the Zimmermans, every tongue that rises up against the Troyers, every tongue that rises up shall be condemned. Every tongue that rises up against the hill, every tongue that rises up, hallelujah, against the guy's family shall be condemned in the name of Jesus. So, Lord, we're covering the families. We're covering the marriages, Father. We're covering them, Father. We cover the Thomas household in the name of Jesus. We cover them, Father, from the crown of their head to the soles of their feet. We cover each and every marriage, Father. We cover each and every spouse, Father. We cover their income. We cover their jobs, Father. We cover them, Father, right now in the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you, huh, that for husbands who love their wives as Christ loved the church. I thank you for wives who respect and honor their husband the way they need to be respected and honored in their home. I thank you for men who are rising up and taking their role as leader of the household, protector, provider, and presider. Seriously, in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Lord, for the men of valor who are standing up. I thank you, Lord, for the women of excellence who are rising early to prepare their household to prepare business, Lord, for themselves and others. I thank you, Lord, that you've already blessed their hands. I thank you that they're blessed going in and blessed coming out. I thank you, Lord, that the fruit of their womb is blessed in the name of Jesus. Oh, I thank you, Lord. I thank you for prophetic words that are being uh, manifested in the earth realm. I thank you, Father God. Oh, I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Lord, because you're doing it again, Lord. You're doing it, Lord. You're bringing it back to restoration. You're restoring households. You're restoring their love, Father. I thank you that they're going to fall back in love with their spouse. Father, I thank you that they're going to do some of the first works over. I thank you for a dating regimen that's being restored in their household, Father. I thank you, Lord, that you're going to renew the twinkle in their eye for one another. I thank you, Jesus. Oh, Lord, I thank you for these marriages that have survived the test of time. I thank you, Lord, that marriages of 10, 20, 15, 30 years are not a thing of the past. I thank you, Lord, and I decree and declare that gray divorce will not hit this broadcast. It will not hit these families. People who've been married for 25 and 30 years will not see divorce in the name of Jesus. But they will fulfill the covenant of to death do us part in Jesus' name. I thank you, Lord, that you're putting to flight every wayward man, every wayward woman coming after spouses with adultery, coming after them, Father, with a lascivious lifestyle, Father. I thank you that they only have eyes for their spouse in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord, that nobody will be able to sway and and switch and sway and, and sashay in front of our spouses. I thank you, Lord, that you've given us the power and the authority to resist temptation because we're submitted to you. And so if we resist, we submit to you, we can resist the devil and he must flee in Jesus' name. I thank you, Lord, that I will confide in my spouse before confiding outside of my house. 
the little boy see? Somebody put that in the chat for me. I've got to confide in my spouse before confiding in outside of my house. I want him to be my go-to, my best buddy, my lover, and my friend is my spouse, the one that God blessed me with, my Boaz, my Ruth, that one. I thank you, Lord. I thank you for blessing these marriages, Father. I thank you, Lord, that they will not forget what you have given them with the joy and honor and privilege of marriage. I thank you that their families, their children, their grandchildren, their great-grandchildren are covered by the blood of Jesus. Ooh, we will confide in our spouse before confiding outside of our house in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord, that you're causing us to rise up and rise above the situation. The joy of having evil eyes is that we see long range. Evil Eagles can see three to five miles out. They can see their prey that far out and swoop down with accuracy for a field mouse. How much more has God given you to be able to see long range? Stuff that doesn't matter too much. Let us be, Father, hallelujah, of the mindset that we will not let it matter too much. If it won't matter in five years, Lord, help us to give it to you, Father, to cast our cares upon you because you care for us. In the name of Jesus, Lord, I thank you that we're prophetically taking that weight off of us, Lord, and giving it to you. Oh, we give it to you tonight. We give it to you in this midnight hour, Lord. We're giving, casting all of our cares upon you. We're casting it upon you. Oh, I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord, because you're giving us a new way. A new way to reach out and pray. A new way to lock arms with fellow believers, with like-minded, hallelujah, married folk, people who want to be married, people who have been married and realize that they made a mistake, but they don't want us to make the same mistake. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord, because you are showing us how to forgive ourselves from the mistakes that we made in the past. That marriage didn't work. God forgives you. Now forgive yourself in the name of Jesus and let it go. Let it go. You did the best you could. And now you're here. God has blessed you with more, exceedingly abundantly above all that you could ask or think. That situation may have been over, but God has something more for you. There's a, a new thing that he's doing, a new thing. Listen, I don't know who's been here. And maybe you're saying, well, Tabitha, you know what? I've been divorced before. And now I'm having problems in this marriage. I'm telling you, God is saying he wants you to let go of the baggage from the past. The baggage from the past. I call it the invisible backpack. Nobody knows that you have it on. But anytime a conflict, of, conflict arises, you pull out the old baggage. The devil is tricking your mind. And he's bringing back the things. I want you to know you've got to let it go. Don't let that be the barometer by which you judge your spouse today. Let it go. Let it go. Lord, we trust you tonight that you're going to give us fresh eyes, fresh eyes so that we're not looking back. There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. The Holy Spirit convicts us to move 
forward so that we press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling. The devil condemns us, keeping us looking back. Somebody here tonight needs to forgive your spouse. Forgiveness. Forgive him. Forgive. Whew, thank you, Lord. Forgiving is, is a process. So it does happen sometimes in layers, like an onion. But forgive. Make a conscious decision. Somebody put that in the chat. I forgive my spouse. I forgive him. I forgive her. We're not going to let that be our portion tonight by which we will sit and now judge or have this bitter root spring up within us of resentment, of discontentment. No, no, no. We lay the ax to the root. Of, of false expectations, uncommunicated expectations. We're laying the ax to it, Father. Help us to be more assertive where we need to be more assertive. Help us, Father God. Help us to speak the truth with love. Help us to be firm, letting our yes be yes and our no be no. I'm not okay with that. I still love you, but I'm not okay with that. It's okay to voice that. And God wants you to be more assertive. I know because I've been there. I have, I had to learn to say no. And it's still a work in progress. No, I don't like that. No, that hurt my feelings. No, I'm not okay with that. No, I don't want to go there. No, they can't come here. No, you can't have those conversations. No, I'm not okay with that, friend. My spirit don't sit well. No is a whole sentence. No, because I love you and because my marriage has boundaries. And the Lord wants you to have boundaries that cannot be breached because we know that the devil will take that little itch and stretch it to a mile. He'll take a foothold and make it a stronghold in your marriage. So we're not giving him anything tonight. We're forgiving. We're letting that go. And Lord, we repent for even holding it against our spouse. I repent in the name of Jesus. Wash me, cleanse me, purge me with your hyssop in the name of Jesus. Lord, I can't do it without you. Lord, I can't make it without you. Not just in this marriage, but I can't make it in this life without you, Jesus. I need you in every corner of my life, every nook and every cranny. I surrender all. I surrender all to you, my blessed Savior. I surrender all. Oh, Jesus, I surrender it all. God, I, there's no portion of me. None. Not one portion of me. That can make it without you, Jesus. There's no way that I can make it without you. There's no way this marriage survives without Jesus. I've seen it done wrong enough, Lord. I've done it wrong enough. I gotta have you, Jesus. I gotta have more of you, Jesus. Whew. More of you, Lord, less of me. More of you, Jesus. Less of Tabitha. More of you, Jesus. Less of me. Mm. Listen. 
Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we thank you. We thank you in advance. Listen, we're going to get right to our command your night for night four. I apologize for uh, last night. I did have family in town. It was, and I was enjoying my family. And I, I don't apologize for enjoying my family. And I pray that you all have made some time to do the same. Um, to God be the glory. I did have some family come in town. And bless the Lord, they have made it safely back home. Thank you, Jesus. So let's go. Let's. We've said that Isaiah 40 verses 30 and 31 are our scriptures, and we're going to go right into that tonight. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, Lord, I thank you. I thank you for my husband. In all of his imperfections. I thank you, Lord, that we, as the two, have become one. I thank you, Lord, that what hurts him hurts me. I thank you, Lord, that I am sensitive to his needs. Thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Lord. I thank you. I thank you in advance that he has a heart that hears my heart. And I have a heart that hears his heart. I thank you, Lord, that I'm sensitive to his needs. I see him trying. God wants us to be able to see our spouse, even in their idiosyncrasies, even in their flaws, and still bring them to him. Jesus. I lay him at the foot of the cross. We will not make our spouse an idol in Jesus' name. I will not make my spouse an idol in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. I will put no man before God, including my spouse. Sometimes that can be a tough one because we're taught to put marriage first. But we don't want to make our spouse an idol. Amen. Amen. Let's go. Every satanic nest prepared to arrest my children in the spirit, catch fire and roast in the name of Jesus. Oh Lord, let the youth of my children be renewed like the eagles in the name of Jesus. Lord Jesus, flush every impurity in the life of my children in the name of Jesus. Our adult children, our children still in the home, flush out every impurity in Jesus' name. Holy Spirit, inflame and and fire the heart of my children for great exploits in Jesus' name. Lord Jesus, lay your hands upon my children and quench every rebellion in their heart in the name of Jesus. Oh Lord, let your fire, 
generate power in the life of my children for great exploits in the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, come as do and refresh the brain of my children in the name of Jesus. Dumb and deaf spirit planted in the life of my children. You shall not engage in rebellion in the name of Jesus. My children obey the Holy Spirit. My children obey Holy Spirit. My children shall not engage in rebellion in Jesus' name. You dumb and deaf spirits, correction, planted in the life of my children, come out in the name of Jesus. Ooh. Spirit of stubbornness. Depart from the life of my children in the name of Jesus. Spirit of pride. Depart from the life of my children in the name of Jesus. Wicked agenda upon my children. Break in the name of Jesus. Witchcraft poison. Uh-huh. Witchcraft food poison targeted at my children. Come out, be flushed out by the power of the blood of Jesus. Spirit of deception in the life of my children, die in the name of Jesus. Destiny demoting names given to my children in the spirit, be nullified in Jesus' name. O oh Lord, anoint the eyes of my children in the spirit for great vision that promotes life and that more abundantly in Jesus' name. O oh Lord, O oh Lord, anoint the hands of my children to excel in whatever they put their hands to do in the name of Jesus. I call forth scholarships in the name of Jesus. I call forth grant money. I call forth, hallelujah, acceleration. I call it forth in the name of Jesus. Grants, scholarships, promotions on their jobs in the name of Jesus. I call it forth now in Jesus' name. Accelerated programming that accommodates and is pure in knowledge, a renaissance even in their mindsets toward arts, crafts, the sciences. In everything, Father, that you have already anointed our children to do, let it be activated now in Jesus' name. Oh Lord, anoint the legs of my children to walk right into breakthrough in the name of Jesus. I command every altar of affliction troubling my family that singles out my children for torture, catch fire and die in Jesus' name. Listen, I can get real serious about my children. I don't know about y'all, but when I pray for my children, the children of my household, my, my children in love and my Bible, listen, all the children. Somebody will, might call them stepchildren. Somebody calls them my, my children. They're just mine. They belong to him. They belong to me. They belong to me. They belong to him. My children. The world wants to put a title of step on there. Those are yours. You're responsible for covering them. I command the altar of wickedness of my father's house, troubling my children to die in the name of Jesus. Satanic priest chanting the names of my children for evil, die in Jesus' name. Altar of infirmity assigned to torment my children, die in the name of Jesus. Every satanic power, I rebuke you. Leave my children alone in Jesus' name. They will not have nightmares. They will not have bad dreams. You will not come after them in their dream life in Jesus' name. Every fear from the pit of hell against my children die in the name of Jesus. Every Goliath boasting against the David in my children die. In Jesus' name, we cut off the head of every Goliath and we turn it back to praise the Lord in Jesus' name. I command blessings into my children's hands in the name of Jesus. They shall not beg before they feed in the name of Jesus. 
because your word says, Lord, I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor the seed begging bread. Our children will not beg bread in Jesus' name. Tonight, let the satanic siren scaring away my children from good things of life die in the name of Jesus. Come out of the darkness and into God's marvelous light in the name of Jesus. Oppressors in darkness against my children die in the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, enter my children, increase their belief in the Lord and kill the spirit of unbelief in them in Jesus name. Kill the spirit of doubt in them. Kill the spirit of new age religion in them. Kill the spirit of witchcraft in them. Kill the spirit of tarot cards in them. Kill it in the name of Jesus. Kill the spirit of idolatry in them. Kill the spirit, hallelujah, of Naruto in them in the name of Jesus. And anime, kill it dead in the name of Jesus. Tonight, I fully nullify, return back to cinder, back to cinder in the name of Jesus, back to cinder, every curse pronounced against my children, it shall not prosper. It shall not prosper in the name of Jesus. Tonight, I fire every power contending with the glory of my children in the name of Jesus. Oh God, arise for my sake tonight. Change what needs to be changed in the life of my children so that they might experience breakthrough. Breakthrough on every level, breakthrough in every dimension, breakthrough in every realm that you have called them to have authority in, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Tonight, I command the cup of disgrace prepared for my children to catch fire and roast to ashes in the name of Jesus. I command it to be so. It shall be so in Jesus' name. I command powers, powers behind stagnation, powers behind stagnation in the life of my children die in Jesus' name. My children excel in everything they put their hands to do. My children excel in everything that the Lord has anointed them to do before the beginning of the foundation of the world in Jesus' name. Tonight, Lord, uncover to my children keys to their prosperity in the name of Jesus. Tonight, Lord, uncover and unleash favor, not just with you, Abba Daddy, but favor, hallelujah, favor, favor with man, Men, women, counselors, teachers, favor in the name of Jesus. Favor, a shield of favor, hallelujah. Every waster of destiny shall not prosper in the life of my children in Jesus' name. Tonight, let everything planted in the life of my children to disgrace them, catch fire and die in Jesus' name. Lord, every seed that you did not plant in their lives be uprooted and destroyed, according to Jeremiah 1, verses 10 and 11, in Jesus' name. Tonight, I command foreign benefits of my children to appear and locate them in Jesus' name. Tonight, Lord, Seal every leaking pocket in the life of my children in Jesus' name. Seal every leaking pocket in Jesus' name. Every dream of backwardness troubling my children expire in the name of Jesus. I command and put an end to evil dreams sowed in the life of my children. I don't know who needs to hear this. But some of you, you're, you're, listen, we're experiencing different things and our children are dreaming about the things where the enemy is trying to come and, and he's trying to discourage them. He's trying to plant fear in them so that they don't fulfill their destiny because he doesn't play fair. And so we command right now that the lives of our children, the dreams of our children, we snatch it back from the pit of hell in Jesus' name. Tonight, I reverse witchcraft burials targeted against my children in Jesus' name. Tonight, 
Let every witchcraft utterance made against my children backfire in the name of Jesus. Let it ricochet back into the enemy's camp in the name of Jesus. Those arrows that came at our children in one way, they must flee and destroy their sender in seven different ways in the name of Jesus. Tonight, I command power summoning the spirit of my children to die in the name of Jesus. Mighty God. Witchcraft powers assigned to exchange the virtue of my children die in the name of Jesus. Witchcraft powers assigned to exchange the virtue of my children die in the name of Jesus. Tonight, I cut off the hand of the witch doctor upon the life of my children in the name of Jesus. Tonight, I pulled down witchcraft walls standing against my children, standing between my children and their success. I tear them down. I pull them down by the blood of Jesus. Every rain of affliction targeted against my children dry up in the name of Jesus blood of jesus purge my children of witchcraft contamination in the name of jesus tonight i command every chain of darkness holding my children in bondage to break in the name of jesus holy ghost fire lock every door my children open to satan in any area of their lives in the name of jesus tonight i command stubborn witchcraft release my children by fire in the name of jesus Tonight, do it now. Release them now in the name of Jesus. Witchcraft powers working against my children die in the name of Jesus. Witchcraft opposition against my children scatter by fire in the name of Jesus. Witchcraft verdicts against my children be nullified in the name of Jesus. Every arrow of witchcraft targeted against my children backfire in the name of Jesus. I command every arrow, every witchcraft pot, every cauldron holding the destiny of my children captive to break and fall, decimated to pieces by the blood of Jesus. Divine arrows of paralysis strike the hand of the enemy now, assigned to plant evil in the life of my children in Jesus' name. Warring angels, I give you the command according to the word of God to surround and protect my children from danger in Jesus name. Tonight, let the dreams and visions of my children come, come to pass in Jesus name. Dreams and visions, because you said you were pouring out your spirit on our sons and our daughters and they will prophesy and see dreams and visions in Jesus name. Every throne of witchcraft where decisions are taken against my children, catch fire and roast to ashes in Jesus name networks of witchcraft against my children catch fire and roast to ashes in jesus name you spirit of my children break the storehouse of your enemy and collect your blessings in jesus name collect your blessings in jesus name thou spirit of my children arise for your light has come and the glory of the lord is upon you in jesus name Tonight, I command any organ of my children in witchcraft altars be released now in Jesus' name. Every covenant of darkness, my children are lured, break in the name of Jesus. The enemy is not playing fair. I've seen cartoons they, because they know, they've known this since the 1950s, that cartoons were a way to teach. And so the enemy is always perverting things just because it's in a cartoon format as a way to access our children, as a way to lure our children into the darkness of witchcraft, into the darkness of new age religion. And so we break it in the name of Jesus Christ. Tonight, I command any drop of my children's blood sucked out by witches to be vomited up in the name of Jesus. Tonight, I command the recovery of any part of my children shared in witchcraft meetings in the name of Jesus. Tonight, I command recovery of anything looted by the enemy 
in my life, in the, my children's life, in the name of Jesus. Recover all. We shall recover all in the name of Jesus. Thou hands of my children, be which be delivered in the name of Jesus. The Lord is delivering our children. Some of us have adult children who have fallen, who are prodigals. And God is saying tonight that those prodigals are coming home. I don't know who has adult children on here, but I'm telling you the prodigals are coming home. They're going to run home. Mm -hmm. They're going to run home in the name of Jesus. They're coming back. Please welcome them with open arms. Please don't condemn them. Please don't bring up the past. Allow them to come home in the name of Jesus with open arms. Thou legs of my children, bewitched by the enemy, be delivered in the name of Jesus. Thou head of my children, bewitched by the enemy, be delivered in the name of Jesus. There's going to be a great deliverance taking place in the body of Christ. And those prodigals, when they come home and they get delivered, I'm telling you, they're going to be mighty warriors. They're going to have stories that will win even more souls. Because my Bible says it's wise to win souls. These children who are coming back, whether they are adult children, I've told you guys that, that there's going to be revival breaking out even in the elementary schools. And so you're going to see college revivals and it's going to be almost commonplace, commonplace for these things to happen. Get ready, get ready, get ready. We're about to see a whole new era of things happening in the body of Christ. Because he knows, he knows that, listen, the devil, according to Isaiah 5, has an expansion plan. God also has a plan to prosper us and to keep us, to give us hope and a future. His plan is for us to go out and win souls. His plan is to redeem every part of us. He is the greatest recyclist, taking every situation we or our children have gone through and redeeming it for his glory. Hallelujah. Listen, family witches, against my children scatter in the name of Jesus. Some of us, listen, some of us get real kind of antsy when I start talking about the witchcraft. My Bible says rebellion is as witchcraft. Anybody speaking to your children against what the word of God says, that's rebellion. Anybody trying to speak against you, speak against your marriage, speak against your children, which are the fruit of your marriage, we bind them up, that's witchcraft, right? Because they're coming against the word of God. They're not just coming against you, they're coming against the word of God. They're not just fighting you, they're fighting him. He fights our battles. He is our righteous vindication. Vengeance belongs to the Lord. So they're not just coming against you, they're coming against him. And so that's why I go hard against the witchcraft because it's a rebellious mindset. It's a backwardness, it's a stubbornness. And it is an iniquity that is in some of our bloodlines that we come against in the name of Jesus. We come against it in the name of Jesus. Every witchcraft eye monitoring my children go blind. I blot you out and I cause you to fall dead to the ground in the name of Jesus. You will not monitor our children. You will not monitor their progress. You will not monitor their steps. You will not monitor their online activity in the name of Jesus. Every witchcraft power manipulating the life of my children die in the name of Jesus. My children shall not operate under witchcraft supervisory in the name of Jesus. Consequence of satanic hands laid upon my children expire in the name of Jesus. Wicked covenants assigned to captivate my children break in the name of Jesus. Every sickness agenda organized for my children scatter in the name of Jesus. I 
I've been saying this to personal friends and family. It bears repeating here. Get new masks for your children. Get new masks for your children. Keep them on supply in Jesus' name. Sickness agenda organized against, organized for my children. Scatter in the name of Jesus. Glory killers assigned to kill the glory of my children die in the name of Jesus. Tonight, I command every failure magnet arranged for my children to die in the name of Jesus. Yeah, 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 yeah. Listen, I hear this so clearly in my spirit. I don't know who's, who's experiencing this. Those of us with stepchildren, what I call children, where your spouse had children, you had children, the other spouse is speaking negatively. And they don't realize that, or the other parent, rather, is speaking negatively. And they don't realize how it's affecting the child. The Lord is silencing the mouth of the lion, speaking against you, your spouse, your current spouse, and your child in the name of Jesus. We render their words null and void. We send every word curse back to sender in the name of Jesus. Those who are sitting, le- lurking around in the in the cut, waiting for your marriage to fail. May the ditch that they dug for you, may they fall in themselves in the name of Jesus. According to Ecclesiastes, it, I, I, it was the word of God in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Listen, I'm telling you what the Lord said. By fire in Jesus' name. So, Lord, we thank you. We thank you, Father God. Mm. Tonight, I command evil arrows troubling the star of my children to die in the name of Jesus. Tonight, I command every anti-focused spirit. Come on, y'all, listen. We're, we're hearing the themes. We're hearing the, the, the words. We're hearing the, um, what do they call it? Attention deficit hyperactive disorder. Anti-focus, anti-focus, right? And so we call our children to be focused in the name of Jesus. I command every anti-focus spirit monitoring my children to die in the name of Jesus. Angels of light, arise, shine light to the, to the destiny of my children in Jesus' name. Every plantation in the life of my children assigned to trouble their future, die and dry up to your root in the name of Jesus. Network of darkness monitoring my children, catch fire and roast in the name of Jesus. Our mistake as parents shall not bring tragedy upon our children in Jesus' name. What we did not enjoy, our children shall enjoy in Jesus' name. Whatever enemy set in motion to destroy my children, scatter in the name of Jesus. Tongue of darkness raised against my children, be pulled out in the name of Jesus. Evil arrestor delegated against my children die in the name of Jesus. Tonight, I command the seed of failure planted in the foundation of my children to wither and die in Jesus' name. My children will be abundantly successful. My children will be unbelievably successful in Jesus' name. Tonight, I command every dark covenant that invites embargo to the life of my children to break in the name of Jesus. Tonight, I command evil plantations tormenting the glory of my children to die in Jesus' name. I plug the lives of my children to the socket of prayer in the name of Jesus. May they forever know that the way up is down in prayer. May they be mighty intercessors in the name of Jesus. Tonight, I command every yoke in the life of my children to break in the name of Jesus. Tonight, I command every hammer of God to break the head of stubborn pursuers after my children in Jesus' name. 
the struggles we could not overcome, our children shall overcome and do even more to excel in Jesus' name. Enemies shall not laugh at my family in Jesus' name. Tonight, I command every power assigned to promote poverty in the life of my children to die in Jesus' name. Tonight, I command the evil pot cooking the glory of my children to break, decimate, break, never to be reassembled in Jesus' name. Listen, we go hard for our children. We go hard for marriage because God is calling us to cover them like never before. Children are going back to school. Marriages, hallelujah, are, it's time for us. Listen, we need to rekindle. We need to do more with our spouses. We need to do more with our children as a family unit. And then there are things that we need to do just one-on-one -on -one in Jesus' name. God is calling us to a place where we are doing more of the one-on-one -on -one stuff. We're doing more for God's glory doing it to his glory. He's going to bless our story. He's going to bless our house. He's going to bless us and bless us indeed. I'm telling you, God wants to get the glory out of your story. I don't know if I have time to do this here, but I want you to know that God is releasing the courts of heaven on behalf of your marriage. His counsel is for your marriage. And so many of the marriages here represented here tonight, I've taken to the courts of heaven. His counsel is for your marriage. And so we put your marriage on the altar. And I've asked the Lord to give us his account. Lord, what is your, what is your order? What is your protocol? What is it? And I'm, I, I know somebody may not willingly want to, but the Lord has said that we must come up under our husbands and husbands who are represented here. You must cover your wife and protect her. Love her like Christ loved the church. Christ is not arrogant. Christ is not boastful. Christ is not forceful. Christ is not stubborn. But he is filled with the fruit of the spirit. And the way we break pride, no matter which spouse is in, the way pride is broken down is through love and humility. If you see pride in your spouse, the recipe, the protocol is to humble yourself and show them love. It doesn't sound right, but it's right. The order that God said to follow to break pride in your marriage is to humble yourself. Humility is the counter product to pride. It's the counter to stubbornness and, and even a spirit of narcissism. Humility. So we must humble ourselves Humble ourselves in prayer. Humble, humble, humble. God is going to break some things. We're going to walk in humility. God, we ask that you give us a garment of humility inside of our marriages. Help us not to get puffed up. Help us not to get boastful. Help us not to fight uh, pride with pride. Help us not to use silent treatment as a weapon against our spouse. Help us to have holy communication so that we can have quality relationships with our spouse in Jesus' name. That is the order. That's the order that God wants us to follow, to be humble, humble. I don't know who is here that needs to hear that specifically, but as I was praying, the Lord gave me that particular protocol a humility, walking in humility, being clothed with humility and love will break pride in spouses and the opposite spouse. 
So we must humble ourselves so that the pride can be broken off because that will cause them to be attracted. And what they're really attracted to is the anointing of Christ in you because the Holy Spirit has given you the protocol. The Holy Spirit has given you, if you will, the recipe. And so I want you guys to take that on these next few months. And just because this is seven days, it doesn't mean it has to stop here. And you all know that as the Holy Spirit leads me, I will be back here to pray. And there will be some times. Listen, I want to go ahead and announce that we have the Elijah Remnant Academy. That is a new era that God is ushering us into. And it is 12 weeks of intensive training on a variety of things from marriage to prophetic intercession. And it was going to be released. I believe Leonice may be on the line. Um, it was going to be released at the end of October. And so I want you all to know that I'll, the date is further coming, but it will be in October, the Elijah Remnant Academy. The prophetic intercession starts on September 12th. We're going to go hard on that on every Tuesday for the next eight weeks. Uh, commencing or starting on uh, September 12th. And we're going to see that through. You're going to see many things start coming up because the Lord has given me the grace. He's given me some downloads where we must take these things seriously. Listen, it is my charge as a, the, in the office of the prophet to give it to the, the body of Christ the way the Lord has instructed me to. And I'm praying that each of you will ingest it, eat the scrolls. It will taste like honey in your mouth. It will be bitter in your belly, but I'm telling you, it's going to be better for your life in Jesus name. It's going to be better for your life. So there are many things. It is 12 intensives, 12 weeks of intensives. And so I want you to know that that is forthcoming and there will be links released on social media for you to participate in. Um, these things will be at a cost, but I, as the Lord leads me, they will be uh, reasonable. I'll say it that way. God is calling us to, to come to a place where we are valuing and we're investing in ourselves. Because the, listen, if we want to go and do anything out in the world, we must put our money where our mouth is. God is saying in this season where he's calling us, we have to invest. We have to invest in us. Listen, the the, the prayer, intercessory prayer training is free 99. I just need you guys to come. The Lord said that must be free. Teaching you how to pray and get the results. I'm telling you, I'm a living testimony of what prayer can do on many levels. You guys have heard me giving testimony here, there, and everywhere. God is not, listen, he's not short on miracles. He's not short on signs or wonders. He's not short on healings. He's not short on testimonies. And he's not short on answering our prayers. But let us learn to pray his way, the king's way, the highway with his protocols and his order in Jesus' name. Listen, I'll be back here tonight at midnight, um, September 5th, for day five of midnight prayers for your marriage. Command your marriage. We're going to command our marriage. Tomorrow, we're going to command our marriage. Tomorrow, I guess. Um, but we're going to command it for the breakthrough. Listen, we haven't been fasting and praying here for nothing. There's a breakthrough and we've just been, listen, we've been chipping away at it. Listen, when people have walked around Jericho, they walked around Jericho for six days, but on the seventh day, on that seventh day, the Lord told them to shout and those walls came down. There's some walls that we need to fall in our marriage. And so we're going to continue to war in prayer to war in prayer, the way up is down, to be on our knees, to lay prostrate. That's not just that I'm in front of the camera, but I'm telling you, we are going to pray without ceasing. And so tomorrow we're going to pray and we're going to decree the breakthrough, the breakthrough that you've been asking for. We're asking God to flood and to flow 
round about our marriage to protect us inside the marriage. Breakthrough. The flood, listen, let the dam break in our marriage. Let it flood with the Holy Spirit. That's what we want. We want the Holy Spirit to come in and rivers of living water flow and overtake our marriage in the name of Jesus. Listen, okay, all right. I won't get ahead of myself, but I want you guys to know that's where we're going tomorrow. So please invite someone else. Like, share, subscribe. Turn on that bell for notifications so that you are notified every time I go live. The Lord is doing great and mighty exploits in your marriage, in your children, in your finances, and in the breakthrough that you need to succeed in your marriage in Jesus' name. I am Prophetess Tabitha Pittman. I'm elated to be here to have this opportunity to war with you in Jesus' name. Listen, it's good to have people in your bunker with you who know how to war and who are not afraid to fight in Jesus' name. And so that is who we are. At Tabitha Pittman Ministries, we're going to war. We're going to pray without ceasing. We're not giving up until God says so. He has the final say so. We are his vessels. We do as we are instructed in Jesus' name. And so I love you all. God bless you. God keep you. Make his face shine upon you. Until next time, bye-bye for now.